We have a very strange new resident moved into Ruby Hollow and they're living in a cave next to our lake. Let's go say hi to this stranger. Anybody home? Oh, hi sir. I see you've brought some of your belongings with you. That's uh, not creepy at all. Oh, well, it's lovely to meet you. Let's see, what do you sell? Oh my gosh, amethyst, interesting. And oh, soul lantern and soul torch. Oh, I'll get a soul lantern. Actually, it's kind of dark over here. Consider this a housewarming gift. That looks good, suits you perfectly. Like all of our other residents, Canalis takes rubies as payment, but we're kind of running low on rubies. We've got 13 to our name. We can fix that though. Today, I want to make a pumpkin and melon farm and then we'll be able to trade for more rubies with our farmers. And then we can see what else our strange new resident has to offer. Oh, but first, I've been fishing at our lovely little fishing lake that we made here. And I managed to get two name tags. So we're going to name it two of our sniffers. They're in here. This is all of our fishing loot. We got three saddles and a bunch of bows. We also have, I don't know if any of these, oh, fire aspect might be good. But first, name tags. Our two names so far are Poppy and Pickle. They're so cute. But now let's head back and get started on our melon and pumpkin farm so that we can get more rubies to trade. I intend on building the farm in the side of a hill kind of next to the farmer's house, which is this. So I've been digging out, um, hello? That is not your house. But I started digging out this and just kind of testing where we would put it. But I think it would make a lot of sense if we put some more deep slate in the roof and the walls before making the actual farm. It's usually a lot less awkward and cramped to do it in that order. And we also need to check if we have melons and pumpkins because I feel like we might need to plant some to get enough seeds. Oh, here we go. 12 pumpkins. Then we'll grab one of our mini diamond hoes. And then in our kind of ugly manual farms area, we'll just get a couple of them growing. Hopefully that'll give us exactly what we need and I'm going to grab some deep slate and finish off the room for it. Okay, so we're at a point with this where it does drop pumpkins and melons, we just need a way to collect them. But as far as getting a minecart and rails, I'm running very low on iron. But I love a good explore, so I was thinking, why not try find the mesa and see if we can get any railways there. Also, maybe we'll find some iron along the way. But I feel like in recent updates, there's usually a mesa attached to one side of the desert. So we're going to go to our known desert, which is east in this direction, and see what we can find. Hopefully a mesa and hopefully some rails. I really wish that we could take our camel on adventures like this, but it's kind of not worth it because we have to go through the jungle. It's okay though, one day we'll make a world in the desert and make a beautiful oasis and live with all the camels. I would actually love that. Eventually I found the desert which had very hilly terrain and I found this round portal. Then after ascending up a desert hill on the other side of it was the mesa. I found this giant cave but I was having trouble finding the regular mine shafts. Eventually I found this one lonely rail so that was a clue we were in the right area. And then after bridging across on the other side there was an actual mine shaft. It didn't really seem to go anywhere except for a spider spawner which I was not going near. But it did lead us to some rails and also some bonus iron. Then I decided to head home but on the way back I found a couple of chests and minecarts. And we're back and we have everything we need to finish off the pumpkin farm. So we'll grab all our rails and make a collection system. Okay, perfect. This does seem to work. So now we just need to make it a little bit cuter. And we are all done. I did a cute little entrance on the outside as well. I have a feeling we're going to be making a few hobbit holes around here. 
because there's quite a few hills and this is the second build I've done in a hillside so it's kind of becoming a theme. But here we have our cozy little interior with the melons and the pumpkins and at this point I think there should be quite a few in the chest. Oh yes there is, okay so we can get trading. We just have to annoyingly craft the melons. Oh, it's going to be nice to actually have some rubies again. And that got us exactly a stack of rubies which is perfect. Actually our axe is running low so we're going to start by visiting our toolsmith. Hi Angus and he can give us another one to combine with it. And then the more fun part of having rubies is that we get to see what else this guy sells. Um, so I guess we'll buy some soul lanterns. A lot of soul lanterns. This is actually taking ages. I do not need this many soul lanterns. And now he sells, oh candles, quartz and spectral arrows. Okay, we're gonna run out of rubies, so I think that'll do us for now. And oh my gosh, I just realized these are stackable. Of course they are, what is wrong with me? That is kind of embarrassing. Okay, but I'm very happy with his trades. I wonder if we can re-dye candles. I kind of like the red ones, but black is not my favorite color. Does this do anything? No. I guess they're stuck being black. Oh, it's kind of a nice black though. It's got like a kind of purpley blue look. I'm sure we will find a use for these. Wait, actually black is so pretty. When they're lit with all the orange at the top. Okay, red is out, black is in. Anyway, with our ruby stash back to a reasonable level, I want to move on to the next thing. In the last episode, we made this a beautiful lake, but we didn't have time to finish everything that's going to go around it. So we're going to keep working on this area today. So far we have the lake decorated and we have our cave over here. But I want at least a couple of buildings in the mountains around here and today I want to make one here. Kind of attached to our dock and I think we can make it into kind of a fantasy themed fishing house. So I've set up a chest and a crafting table with everything we'll hopefully need. And then I've kind of planned how wide I want the house to be, so that's what these spruce pillars are. But first of all, we want to extend the dock. So the dock can kind of become a balcony and then line up with a front door here. Okay, the balcony is done and I've planned the size of the house. So here we have an entrance. We're going to build this out of calcite which is definitely getting unsustainable. I don't think we're gonna have much calcite after this. Oh, that does not go there. But it's okay, we'll find another solution to white blocks and we also have some white concrete. Okay, but let's bring these up by maybe four on each side. And then we'll make the middle where the doorway is a little bit taller. And from over the other side of the lake, I just wanted to check that the size and shape is good. I think that'll be perfect. I'm loving how this lake area is turning out. It's so good. I can't wait to add more to it. So for the fantasy vibes, let's go for a kind of steep A-frame. So the classic stair, full block, a stair. And then we end in kind of a steep point in the middle. Maybe with a little bit coming up. Then a little more simple for the sides, we'll just go across like this. And then going back here, back to a steep A-frame. Then we're going to fill in the white walls and the roof which is a pink to crimson gradient. And now it's the fun details part. So I want to start by making kind of an overhang over the door here. And for that we'll use campfires. I always forget about these as a detail block, but they can be really nice. And then we'll do a little edge of trap doors. And maybe actually we replace a couple of the campfires. Oh, that was kind of a waste. But we'll put these leaves in so it kind of looks like a garden or something. Then of course this needs to be held up, so we'll try fences and diorite. I don't usually use diorite, but hopefully it'll work. And that should be the middle part detailed. Then this side is almost done already. There doesn't really need to be much. We'll just put a fence in here and a light. The deck is looking a little bit bare on this side, but it is a fisherman's house, so we'll add some barrels or something there. But for this side, I want to try something a little bit different. 
let's try a little overhang thingy like this and then we'll add the barrels oh that's so cute this definitely it gives fishermen then for the final touch I decided to make a big fish sign on the top This is looking so cute. I love how it's turned out and I also did a little bit of work on the inside. Oh, is that? There's a creeper over there. We're just going to ignore him and he'll ignore us. That's how that works, right? Anyway, I made this cute sign and I decorated the interior so that a fisherman villager might like to move in. So we've got a wall divider in the middle and this side is a bedroom. And then over this side, I made it into a shop. The item frames here are empty for now, but if a fisherman moves in, he'll be able to sell items here. Or she. Is fish a woman a word? I don't think it is. We need a gender neutral word for fisherman. But I think with our beautiful fishing house complete and also our pumpkin farm, that'll be all for today. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!